we have iron for days. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we have absolutely loads of iron. As you can see from my inventory, stacks and stacks of iron blocks and stacks and stacks of iron. And that's because the iron farm, which I started last episode, has been completed. Look at that. We've got the two spawning platforms up there. We've got the two drop sheets going down. We've got lava killing systems on either side. We've even added some hopper clocks to time a zombie being shown to the villagers. And then we've got six villagers, three on each side. So it works a treat and we get two golems basically every 30 seconds. You can see some of them dying here. And we get loads of iron. So the iron comes out in this bottom chest. I've just cleared them out. And what I've been doing is crafting up the iron into iron blocks just for easier storage. And I've actually also brought over these guys, which are two villagers. One of these is the armorer and we can actually trade in all of our iron for emeralds because we have plenty. And I've also got the cleric here once again, like I did last time, in order to trade gold and also to get redstone because we need that for a project in today's episode. And that project is an improved piglin trading setup. So currently we've just been using this one, which is very basic with only one piglin and a bunch of storage. But today I want to build a more industrial setup up by our gold farm on the nether roof. So if you do remember, this is our gold farm. And it allows us to get a bunch of gold by slaughtering zombie pigmen over in the central area here. And I thought the best place to build this piglin trading setup would be right below the gold farm. So I've got this shulker box that I got from Pyro. It was a very nice gift of him. And he actually gave me a bunch of redstone. So substituting the redstone that he gave me with some of my own, I've managed to acquire just over a stack of redstone blocks which is really, really great. And along with the iron or all of this wood that I've been gathering in between episodes, we should be able to build a great setup. But first, I've got a clip of me and Vapor breaking some bedrock in the nether roof to allow easier access to the gold farm. Well, hello there. Hello. How are you? <laughs> yeah, I've been doing pretty good. It's kind of, kind of hot here. Just a little bit. I think I've got used to it now. I've been in here for so long. Yeah, I've called on you because I need a little bit of help breaking some bedrock since I've had to die basically every time I want to get above the nether. I've got to die to get back down since I'm staying in the nether, as we all know. Ooh, what's your death count out? Do you know? Your death count at? Good question. Probably over 200. <laughs> 225. 225. Wow. That's a lot of gold use, gold farm uses. Yes, um, some of them. I mean, quite a lot of them are not intentional as well. But <laughs> I heard that you needed help with all this, so I brought all of the necessary stuff to help break some bedrock today. Yes, that'd be great. So the way, do you do you know how these designs work? Yeah, I don't know the exact specifics, but yeah, you kind of spam place a piston down and it like blows up the piston head and faces into the bedrock and stuff happens magic yeah so the the interesting behind it is the way that um the way that redstone sort of deactivates um it is able to it like deactivates the um the piston but it blows it up like in the same tick and because of that it you're able to place a block there, but it's still powered, and it's it's really interesting. Okay, and then while it's whoa whoa whoa, whoa. Oh. uh oh uh oh back up <laughs> oh oh no oh all your ch okay um <laughs> well the first thing we've learned we should probably move the <laughs> we should probably move the chest. Uh, second thing I learned what was the block that you wanted it at again? Let me rebind my use button and so now what will happen is when i'm under there i can spam it so if you look if you, if you hear all the spam it's because i instead of holding down my right click button um i'm holding down a keyboard button I mean that all i need to do is come on under here and hold it down and it should place the piston i will be quite honest with you i've never done it in this type of lag before oh true so this could either go this could either go really good or really, really bad. <laughs> Uh-oh. So it didn't work as well as I thought. So after trying that several times, 
we eventually got it to work. And actually, I didn't capture this footage because Vapor did it sort of off camera. We were having some issues with lag and stuff like that, so we weren't able to break the bedrock on camera. But Vapor came by and did that after I had left, and it worked wonderfully. So now we can get up and down through the bedrock. We can also transport villagers through here at some point. And also it's a lot easier to bring supplies up and down from below and above the nether. But anyway, we're going to head back up now, up to the gold farm, because I want to start work on the new setup. So before we start work on the Piglin training setup, I need to install a proper storage system into this here. Since the one we've got isn't quite cutting it and we have a lot of swords sort of lagging up the ground. So the first thing to do is get rid of this old system, which worked great when we didn't have much redstone. But now we've got a bunch of it in the shulker box here, we should be able to install a better system. And I've actually planned this out already. So I'm going to start just by tearing this one down and then uh, start building up the other storage system. With the majority of the old redstone now removed, we can start working on the new system. And I've actually already designed this in creative. So I'm going to build up this system now and show you it once it's done. Lots of progress has been made on the redstone and there is still a lot more to go. But I think I'm going to hop into the camera account now so I can show you around in a little bit more detail than I can show from my main. So from the camera account, you can see that I am stood here, AFK in the farm, and we have all of the mobs sort of running towards me as they usually do. They die here on this block, and then we have this little system over here, which splits the items into two fairly equal sort of pathways. Now this minecart is positioned so it's above two hoppers, so that it splits the items halfway down each side. So we get half of the items in this chest and half in this chest. And that works really wonderfully. So this means that we can have the system run at two times hopper speed. And here we have two parallel pathways for the hoppers. Coming down even further, you can see I've installed just one item sorter for now. This is for the gold nuggets and it sorts them out from the rest of the items. And for now, the rest just end up in these chests here. So I need to install some more sorters for that in the future. But for now, we're leaving it as it is. Coming down even further, you can see we've got our two nugget streams going to here. And here they're loaded into hopper minecarts. And the reason for this is because we want to auto-craft the gold, so we need to distribute it evenly between a bunch of droppers, so we can pulse those droppers and dispense all of the gold to the player at once. So that's what this is, it loads up the minecarts, and once we reach a certain threshold of items in the minecart will be sent across, it will dump one item in each row, and then it will head back. So we've got two storage chests for every single dropper, so that should be plenty of storage for all of our gold. I've got to expand the system still, so as you can see, we've only got half the system installed at the moment. We're gonna mirror this on the other side as well, and that should allow us to have 44 droppers dispensing items, which should allow us to pick up loads of golden nuggets, which we could then craft into golden ingots. All of the items that are dispensed will end up in here, and actually I can give you a live demonstration of this right now if I position my camera account here. With my camera account now in the correct position, we should be able to flick the lever, and activate the system and you can see a bunch of gold nuggets are dispensed and you can see a piston feed tape down at the bottom moving all of the gold nuggets across to the side and that simply moves them round and as you can see if I just hop back into the spectator account it moves them all across to the player here who's able to pick them up so obviously at the moment my inventory is full but your inventory would be empty and all the gold nuggets actually end up down here where you can pick them up. So I'm gonna have a proper pickup system for the player with crafting tables and stuff like that. But that allows all the gold nuggets to be transported over to the player. I am so shocked. We've actually run out of wood. I collected so much wood for this project and I ran out because we had, of course, to build all of those chests and all of those hoppers, which is an absolute ton. So I started work already on the second half of the auto crafter, but unfortunately I've had to come down here and gather some more wood. And I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you my wood gathering setup. In order to grow a crimson tree, we need a crimson fungus and bone meal. We gather the bone meal by putting the nether wart blocks that we gathered from the leaves of the trees into a composter. And we also get plenty of bone meal by putting all of the poppies from our iron farm into the composter. So as you can see, we've got a bunch of bone meal and we can use that to grow the trees. In order to get the crimson funguses, we just right click on the nylium like so and we grow them and we occasionally get a crimson fungus and we can gather all of these up and use them to grow the trees. Once we've gathered a substantial amount we can place it down on the block here, bone meal that into a tree, break away the bottom block so that this one remains nylium and why am I not picking this up? Once we've broken away that bottom block we can then mine the rest of the tree. If it's a super tall tree sometimes I'll end up up to the top 
but if not I just make my way up like so and then we use our diamond hoe to break away the rest of the leaves like so. Once I've mined all of the leaves I break away the trunk of the tree and make my way down to the bottom once again ensuring I pick up all of the leaves and stuff that I mined away from the tree. Then I'll repeat this over and over again until I'm happy with the amount of leaves I've got and then I'll head back over to my composting setup, put in all of the nether wart blocks, all of the weeping vines in here and I've got two composters here which are working to produce a bunch of bone meal for us to use for future trees. So it works a treat and I've just been grinding away doing this in order to get all the wood for this project. It's a little bit slow but it does work and I'm so glad I've got the diamond tools that I got from the villagers in order to carry out this task a lot more efficiently. With three and a half stacks of wood now gathered as you can see from my hotbar we should have enough wood to craft the chests and hoppers in order to finish this auto crafting setup. So let's do that. Progress. So much progress. As you can see we're in a completely new area now and that's because I've built up this gold farm storage room from scratch and it's looking pretty cool. I've gone with a blackstone and red nether wart theme or red nether brick even and I've got this sort of ceiling here. I've gone for this sort of corridor archway design and then I've got two wings off to the side and I'm not quite sure what I'm going to put in each room yet but for now we're going to go through all of the features. So we have over here two stacks and this is for the gold so all of the gold from the gold farm appears in here and then the heads appear in here. At the moment though we are just using this to store a bunch of items in order to build up the storage room because it's not done yet we've still obviously got these wings here and I want to bring some villagers up here as well so that we can trade in all of the rotten flesh for the farm. And speaking of rotten flesh, over here is where we're storing it. As you can see, we got it on both sides and we have these indicator lumps to show when a slice is full. So as you can see, we've got a bunch of rotten flesh and we've got two slices full and we're working on filling the next slice. Each slice has two chests, as you can see, so this one isn't quite yet filled. And that goes all the way across on both sides, so we've got plenty of storage for that. And once we install some cleric villagers back here, we're going to be able to trade all of that away for emeralds and a bunch of stuff. So I'm really hyped for that, that's why we've got all these spring sands over here and that's going to be something that I'm going to have to do in a minute which is bring up some villagers over here which is going to be quite a challenge. Moving on, up here is the auto crafter. So all of the gold will fall down onto this spot and we can craft it up into gold ingots and I think I'm going to demonstrate that in just a second but for now I want to show you all of the redstone we've done a lot of it. Both sides of the auto crafter are now done and they're actually filled up a fair way. I've done a bunch of AFKing as you can see we've got almost a dropper's worth of each of them which is going to get us a bunch of gold so I'm going to try this out in just a second but we've also installed all of the sorters over here let's just hop slightly further up and show you all the sorters so as you can see we've got gold nuggets we've got rotten flesh we've got um, gold we've got piglin heads and then we've just got a bunch of empty item sorters here so that works a treat and we actually did some of this work on a live stream so if you want to check out my live streams, it's twitch.tv slash vortexwarp. There'll be a link down in the description. And I plan to do a few more of these in the future. We've got the same on the other side with the item sorters. As you can see, a bunch of different items. And you've already seen the gold redirecting down. So I'm going to briefly go over the other items. We've just got them going down in pathways all to the other areas. And this is where the rotten flesh goes down. You can see we've got the redstone here. I just threw this together in order to light up the lamps in the correct order just some tileable slices detecting when it's full. I've installed this little contraption, I'm not quite sure if it's perfect yet, but what it does is it kind of stores up a chest of items, so as you can see it stores up a chest full of items before it throws them away, so that if you accidentally die in the system, what it will do is it will keep your items. The way it works is it fills up this chest and once it reaches its limit, this, this hopper minecart will be pushed over to the other side, so it will be loading into this chest instead, and then this chest will start to empty. So there's always sort of a buffer of a chest's worth. Now the only time where this does not work ideally is when you sort of die just as the chest is filling up so that the items sort of actually get destroyed. So it's not 100% foolproof but it does mean if you were to die in the system there's a pretty good chance you'll be able to get your items back by using this chest full of buffer here. That's actually it for the storage room. I mean aside from obviously all the archways and stuff it's a pretty basic design. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with the rest of the hall. Obviously once I've got my villagers in, that will sort of set out our direction and we can find what are we going to actually do with all the emeralds. Maybe we need some emerald storage, maybe a bunch of other stuff like that. So I'll work on that in the future. But for now, we're going to go for a demonstration of our auto crafter. So we need to fill the first row of our inventory with golden nuggets. 
And then we need to fill the rest of our inventory with gold. And that should do it. And I haven't actually tested this with so many items. So we'll see how well this works. We flip the lever. We should see the gold coming down from the top onto this pressure plate. And yeah, that's working. Okay, let's stand on here. You can see we get it in quite big batches. So let's click on here. We can craft the gold up. So it's a little bit slow, but it, it's, yeah, I'd actually argue that it's fairly, fairly adequate for our needs. Oh, I accidentally messed it up by clicking on the wrong thing. So maybe I need to add another row so that we get more gold because I am keeping up with the system quite well. But it is like fairly good. It's still filling me up. Like I get, yeah, I get like a stack of gold at once in a big batch. A lot faster than clicking into the chests and stuff like that. It fills up your inventory in one big batch and that's so satisfying that it comes through in a batch like that. And I've almost filled up my inventory with gold now, so we must be nearing the end of our supplies, surely. I'm not sure how much gold I had in the system. We're done. Okay, let's flick the lever off and see how much gold we've actually gathered from that crafting session. Almost a double chest full of gold, so let's craft this all up into gold blocks. So this is proof that we can easily get large amounts of gold, and wow, look at that, that's so satisfying. And with this gold, we'll be able to trade with the piglins. But I do believe the next step before we work on the piglin trading is actually to install some villagers in this area over here. So let's get on with that. I've come down here to below the bedrock and we need to first start off by building a railway system that goes all the way down to the villagers which are at the iron farm. So I've started work on this already. I've built a little railway system that goes down. It's not yet complete. I've got plenty more of it to do. But what we've effectively got to do is work our way all the way down over here which is to our base, so our base area is just down here. And once we've done that, we can connect it up with this railway system over here, which I've built from the iron farm all the way out to this area here. So once we've linked up these two areas, we should be able to start transporting our villagers across. And with the last few rails now being placed in, we should now be ready to start transporting the villagers across. So I'm gonna, well, grab another minecart actually. <laughs> and then I'm gonna head over all the way to the iron farm and see if we can start getting some villagers in some minecarts. This might be slightly harder than I anticipated since there's a bunch of golems over here. But either way, I think I'm just gonna try and get, oh, I've got one out, okay. Okay, can we get him in the minecart? We can, okay. So this is our first guy. I did not, oh, he's, he's dying. He died. Okay, we've got a villager in the minecart. We've removed the lava so that he doesn't burn. So hopefully we can just push him out onto the rail system. Okay, we're gonna encounter some problems with the golems because they're no longer dying. So let's temporarily place the lava back in. And he's off, brilliant. Okay, let's also hop on the rail and follow him along. This is hilarious, just watching him disappear into the distance with me behind him. We've reached the corner. Okay, this is where it gets worrying because these piglin guys are gonna start attacking me. And I might just have to, whoa. He's going, he's going up. Hopefully he makes it up to the top. We're gonna follow him. Oh yes, he's reached the top. So this is our first villager. And the hard part is gonna be getting him up through this gap here. Then we've got to build up another railway system up to there. Then we can bring our second villager in and start breeding them. So I'm gonna to get to work and see if we can transport this villager up above the bedrock. I'm going to go for a super risky strategy. I've got my fire resistance potions. These are only three minutes, but I'm gonna slash both me and the villager, and then we're gonna introduce some lava, and hopefully he should swim up in the lava. I think he is, yeah, he is, okay, and so are we. Here he comes, I can see the top of his head. Is he stuck? What's going on? Oh, no, he's emerging. He's so slow, and he's out. Okay, I splash him once more, and hopefully that should be enough that he's permanently up here. Where is he going? Guy, what are you doing? Okay, we've got our second guy in the minecart, so let's push him off and get him up to the top. One villager, two villagers in little compartments above the bedrock, and one huge rail system to link them all together. Both villagers are now in minecarts on our rail system, and the hardest parts can be transporting them up to the top. Ideally, I don't want to use powered rails, but I feel like I might have to in order to get this to work. The power of the furnace minecart, something that's generally thought of as useless, but I think in this case it'll be very useful indeed. So I've gathered up a bunch of campfires by trading them with the villagers, and with the charcoal from the campfires I can now power the minecart, and that should, if I just put a bunch of these in, take our villagers all the way up to the top. I'm hoping it has enough power to do that. 
up it goes. Oh yes, two villagers stored up above our gold farm trading room. And I think now I've actually decided what I'm going to do with at least one of these sections. I think I'm going to install a villager breeder in here so that we can easily repopulate our area over on the side. It will only be a simple one. I'm not going to have any automatic carrot farms or anything, but I'm going to install the villager breeder and then we can populate this with a bunch of clerics in the future. But that's actually going to be it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, remember to leave a like, comment and subscribe down below. My name's been Vortex Warp, and this video has sadly come to an end. Goodbye guys, see you in the next one.